show you this beautiful little 1880s Fairbanks and Cole probably a ladies banjo is what they marketed these two it's a shorter scale than standard let me get my scale measuring device here the way you measure scale on one of these banjos is you measure from the nut to the 12th fret which on this instrument is right about here and then you measure from the 12th fret to where the bridge is positioned. That's where your the position of your bridge. So if I measure from the nut to the 12th fret, it's 12 and 3 quarter inches. So 12 and 3 quarter plus 12 and 3 quarter, that gives us 24, like a 25 and uh, 25 and some change scale. So the scale is a little over 25. I'm not too good at mathematics, but uh about a 25 inch scale on this little instrument. Check out the beautiful bridge on it and that beautiful original antique tailpiece. I love that tailpiece. I'm not sure if that's celluloid or bone. I'm thinking bone. And we've got, of course, the Rogers head. You see the, the ink stamp there. Really nice bridge on this tailpiece. Is that bone or celluloid? I'm going to say it's celluloid by the way it tapped against my teeth. Well, Fairbanks and Cole was a really a really good banjo manufacturer. Let's see. There's the stamp. So they manufactured banjos from about 1880 to about 1890. They uh the two owners uh, A.C. Fairbanks and a guy named Cole, they split up and parted ways about 1890. So then you have the Fairbanks Banjo Company and the Cole Banjo Company. It became two separate companies at that point. They were big competitors with S.S. Stewart. Those were, and for, a, for a while, they were probably the biggest, the two biggest banjo companies was S.S. Stewart and the Fairbanks and Cole until they split. But of course, you had a bunch of lots of other makers in there as well. Um, I think you know Buckby, of course, was was mass producing, and then you had uh, the different Dobson brothers who were working with Buckby. They were all major competitors. Blah 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 blah. But let's take some some closer looks at what y'all really are interested in here. Neat little inlay work here. You got the original old-timey tuning pegs. It's got a real nice sharp V profile to the neck and the heel we kind of collectors today call that a boat shaped heel so the V goes all the way to the boat. Typical Fairbanks and Cole uh, neck joint device there. What's really nice on this banjo is the rim. The rim has entirely uh, inlaid with mother of pearl and it's quite nice goes all the way around I like it it's real pretty real simple real pretty um, I can show you more of this I didn't show you this it's got a nice star there and these are kind of I don't know what you'd call that type of inlay it's really a kind of a Maltese cross but it kind of reminds me of a, of a snowflake but a sort of a rounded Maltese cross and then more of these little kind of bow tie designs. Because that's not really a bow tie, but oh well. 
sort of it's a it's an unusual inlay it's not just the plain inlay really really nice instrument I guess that's really all I need to show you on this there's nothing nothing too spectacular about it if you want to learn more about these old banjos if you want to see a full photo spread of this instrument and lots of other antiques rare antiques I hope you'll join us at the patreon group uh, I believe that link is appearing right about here, right about now. So if you go to patreon.com slash Clifton Hicks, you can support us there. You can see photos and join the discussion. Um, this instrument is currently for sale. If anybody's interested, see what I've got. I may not have this one in stock anymore when you contact me, but there's a good chance I'll have something else. Uh, if you want to learn how to play the banjo, I also offer an online course at banjoheritage.com. And we hope to see you there. Thanks for looking.